Hello, everybody. What a tremendous privilege it is once again to be able to share God's word with you. And um, greetings here from South Africa to all of our Shofar Church family. Uh, blows my mind to think about it that through this wonderful medium of um, uh, social media and the online platform that we are using, that I'm able to chat to you guys, those of you in Namibia, Malawi, Burundi, in the Netherlands and the UK, and of course, all of our congregations here in South Africa. Just a big, big shout out to each one of you guys. And if you are in a shofar congregation and you know somebody who is in another congregation, then I want to encourage you to um, please reach out to them, maybe even today, send them a WhatsApp, uh, give them a call and just find out how they're doing, reconnect with them. Maybe you haven't spoken to them in a while, but you know, we are still all family, even though we are in different parts um, of uh, our countries and different parts of the world for that matter. Um, it is a joy to lead this church family together with the rest of the apostolic team. And it's been a great honor to uh, once a month to share a word with you, which we believe is going to be a great blessing to you guys. And of course, this is um, second prize, isn't it? This is a distant second best option to being able to visit you. And I can't wait for the opportunity when we will be able to physically be with you guys and just to, to worship with you, just to be able to spend time with your intercessors and your leaders and to pray with you guys on a Sunday and to, to hear the words that God has also placed on your heart as you exhort each other. It is always one of the most precious moments for me when I arrive at a shofar congregation and I can sense God's spirit is the same and moving in our midst. So, so thank you for being part of this church family and thank you for your prayers uh, as well for all of us as your as your leaders uh, let me pray for us so just there we are just close your eyes and if you can just focus on jesus turn your attention to him maybe some of you guys you busy cycling then please don't close your eyes or, or jogging maybe driving in your car but uh, just quiet your spirit and uh, let us focus our attention upon jesus Lord Jesus, we want to thank you for this opportunity, Lord, that we do have to be together. And God, we want to exalt you and lift up your name and declare, Jesus, that we love you. We declare that we are so thankful for your Holy Spirit. We are so thankful for your word. We are so thankful for fellowship with other believers. During these uncertain times, your word still remains the same. And we thank you, God for binding us together and that this morning or this afternoon or whenever we might be listening to this message, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would speak to each one of us in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So I have been sharing with our, our pastors and with our staff a portion of Scripture from Jeremiah, the sixth chapter and verse 16. And, and I'm going to read that portion of Scripture with all of us today. And um, share a little bit around the apostolic directive, which I believe God has given us as a Shofar church family. Uh, verse 16 of Jeremiah 6 says, Thus says the Lord, stand by the roads and look, and ask for the ancient paths where the good way is, and walk in it, and find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk in it. I said, watchman over you, saying, pay attention to the sound of the trumpet. Pay attention to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, we will not pay attention. Pay attention to the sound of the trumpet was a verse that really leapt out from the pages of my Bible as I, as I read it. And I was reminded again of our, our beautiful mandate, our legacy that God has given us as shofar to be a prophetic voice, to be a voice that can call attention to the Word of God, can call attention to what the Spirit of God is saying. The, the shofar we know was blown to usher in a new dispensation in the history of the nation of Israel. It was used to, to carry the anointing oil that the prophets used to anoint the, the kings and the servants of God. It was used also to bring attention 
um, to the hearts of God's people when there were times of war that was approaching and they had to become vigilant or enroll and enlist in the army. And so the, the shofar was blown in a way that would draw people's attention, in a way that would call people to a very significant time, a very significant moment, a very significant event. It would awaken the hearts of people. It was supposed to be a, a rallying cry back to the things of God. It was not supposed to draw attention to man and draw attention to a man's words, but it was supposed to draw the people of God back to the Word of God, back to the priorities of God. And here in Jeremiah 6, we find that, that, that the prophet Jeremiah blows the trumpet, so to speak. He reminds God's people, and, and, he, and he says to them, remember, or maybe let me rather say this, that the prophetic voice, whenever we think about prophecy, we tend to think about that which is to come, things that will still take place, things that will still unfold, and, and that is true. Uh, the prophetic voice does indeed show us and reveal to us God's heart concerning the future that He has for us, the plans and the thoughts and the intents and the purposes that God has for us as His people. But the, the spirit of prophecy is also the spirit that reminds us of the things that Jesus has already spoken to us about. Jesus' own words was that He the Holy Spirit, when He comes, He would remind us of everything that Jesus has spoken. And here we see that, that the trumpet that's being blown reminds God's people to do something very specific, in a way to look back, in a way to cast their eye away from where they are right now and, and away from where they're heading, because where they were heading was actually heading to, to destruction. Where they were heading was the fruit of their own disobedience, because they'd strayed from God. They'd strayed from His ways. They'd strayed from His heart. They were following their own ways. And the prophet Jeremiah says to them, stand by the roads, in verse 16, stand by by the roads. Uh, this word stand is a, is a word that, that um, when I, I read that verse, I was reminded of this song that um, we listen to quite often. Um, one of our favorite DVDs, it's a, it's a kiddies DVD, it's the DVD called Sing. I, I think some of you guys as parents, you will know this DVD quite well. And uh, one of our favorite characters in there is the little elephant, and, and she's one of our favorite characters because she has this amazing voice, and it's the voice of uh, Tori Kelly. She is a wonderful Christian artist who loves the Lord Jesus dearly and has a beautiful voice and loves to worship. And, and, and so she's part of this, uh, this animation movie. Her voice is, is part of this. But the other character that we love is this guy called Johnny. Uh, Johnny is uh, an English character. Um, with an English accent, and, and we just love him to bits. He is um, uh, a guy who has dreams in his heart, and he, he wants to become a, an artist, a musical artist. His dad wants him to become an artist as well, but a con artist. And so his dad wants him to uh, carry on with the family tradition of robbing banks and, and driving the getaway car. And, and one day, Johnny isn't there. Johnny isn't driving the getaway car because Johnny is at this audition. He's busy rehearsing for this musical show, and so his relationship with his dad obviously goes, goes bust, and his dad writes him off, and his dad is captured and taken to prison, and Johnny continues uh, singing, and, and this big show arrives, and, and he sings this, this song, and his dad hears the song from far away, and, he, and, and he's in prison, and he hears his son's voice, and something happens to his heart, and he responds, and he breaks out of prison, and he yeah, you must go and watch it. And he jumps from building to building and he dodges the police helicopter to get to his son who's singing this song. I, I think it was an Elton John song. And so we know we don't uh, agree doctrinally with Elton John's lifestyle, but the song says, I'm still standing. Yeah, yeah.
just like a little kid, he says, I'm still standing. And I was thinking about this, and the tune just came to my heart, and I was thinking about us as God's church. And one of the major themes of, of church history is that the church is still standing. <laughs> In actual fact, the church will keep on standing. Amen. If you're there, just, just say amen to that. The church will keep on standing and the gates of hell will not stand against God's church. God's church will keep on standing and God's church will keep on advancing. That is the message of Scripture and that is the message of church history. Ephesians 6 speaks about this and says that after you have done everything to stand Stand, therefore. Stand in the armor of God, the, the shoes of peace, the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the helmet of salvation, the shield of faith, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Stand. Don't, don't lie down. Don't sleep. Don't shrivel up into a little corner and, and hide away from the world and the challenges of the world. Church, stand. And then why can we stand? Uh, if we follow the pattern of Ephesians, we know that the standing comes from our sitting and from our walking, our being seated in Christ and resting in Christ and what Christ has done for us, and then walking according to the Spirit and the ways of the Spirit. If we are, if we are securely anchored in what Christ has done for us on the cross, and if we walk by the leading of the Holy Spirit, then, then we can stand we can stand not in our own strength, not in some man-made uh, self-preservation, gritting the teeth, holding on for dear life kind of standing, but standing with the spirit of resurrection inside of us, standing with the spirit of victory inside of us, standing with the boldness of Him who promised us that He will never leave us and He will never forsake us. We can keep on standing. Uh, a few weeks ago, I shared with our congregation in Shofar, uh, Somerset West, and you can see the link down at the bottom to this message. I, mean, I, I shared with them just how sometimes you don't feel like standing, do you? Sometimes, you know, stuff just happens to you and you, you hit that wall. Like I hit that glass sliding door, running at full speed. I didn't see the sliding door, ran into it, and I was just taken out. I just... I was just lying on the ground, dazed, seeing stars, and I'm like, man, I'm, I'm done. I just want to lie here for a few minutes. Those of us who have done distance running or cycling or any endurance sport, we know what happens to you when you hit that wall, don't we? And that wall comes unexpectedly. That wall comes out of the blue. That wall comes almost in spite of all of your preparation, sometimes it can just hit you and you're like, just, I just want to sit down now. I just want to lie here and I don't care who runs past me. Guys, you can go and finish the race. I'm done. I'm just going to lie here. And sometimes we hit that spiritual wall. We run into the glass door that we didn't see coming. And it's as if the wind gets knocked out of our faith. The breath gets knocked out of our lungs. And, and, we, and we're down and out for the count. And then the, the word of God comes to us and he says, stand. Stand, talita kumi. Stand to your feet. Arise and stand, church. I'm speaking to the ones this morning that is standing by the strength and the Spirit of God inside of them. And I feel in my spirit just to speak this word over some of you. And so I'm going to pray in the Spirit just as a, 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 a sign of surrender to God for this next prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I speak strength, a standing strength, Lord, over your people. Father, I speak to my brother, Lord, who, who right now feels overwhelmed by his sin, right now feels overwhelmed by his shame, right now feels overwhelmed by his failure. I feel, Holy Spirit, that you are saying that there are dads here who feel so incompetent who feel so almost emasculate, feel stripped of 
all their masculine strength and they have given up and they have submitted to a spirit of fear. They have submitted to a spirit of hopelessness and despair and have given up leading their families. And right now, God, I speak faith over their hearts. I speak strength over them to stand in Jesus' name. And I say to you, stand, my brother. Stand in the strength and the authority of God. Stand and lead your family again. Stand and love your wife again. Stand and discipline your kids in love and share the word with them. Stand in Jesus' name. I rebuke the spirit of hopelessness that would want to come upon God's people during this time. And I release a spirit of standing in humble authority, but standing in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I just felt that some of you, even right now, you just need to stand up from there where you are sitting. Stand up and say, Father, I thank you for the strength to stand in the midst of the storms that I'm facing. Lord, thank you for your strength that will keep me standing because the faith that lives inside of you doesn't come from you. It's a faith that God has given you. It's a faith that God has given you. And I'll touch on that now again. Stand by the roads and look. There's so many roads, so many different avenues, so many different choices that we have to make during this time. To vaccinate or not, to homeschool or not, to move city or town or country or not, there, to start that new business or continue in the one that maybe is taking strain. So many options. And God is saying to us, I want you to look. I want you to look at all of these options, but I want you to do more than just look. I want you to ask. Ask for the good way. Ask for the good way because there is a good way. Hallelujah. There is a good way. God doesn't want all of these roads that are coming upon us to so confuse us that we forget that there always, in every situation, is a good way. Hebrews says that God is faithful who will not allow us to be tempted above of our power, above of our strength, but together with every temptation, He will make a way of escape for us. There's always a good way. There's always a way out of every situation. There is a good way, not a treacherous way, not an evil way, not a manipulative way, not a misleading way, not a way filled with potholes. Those of you in other countries, maybe in the UK or the Netherlands, a pothole is a big hole in the road. When you're driving and all of a sudden you hit that, that hole and, and your car's uh, wheel can get damaged, maybe even disappear in that hole if you're in certain parts of, of Africa. But there's hope, there's a way, there's a new way, a good way, Scripture says. But that good way is ours only if we ask for the ancient paths. And what is the ancient path? The ancient path is that old path, almost that path that has been forgotten, that path that has been covered with debris and with all sorts of stuff. It is, it is, it is what Scripture calls the way of the Spirit. And in church, I believe that when, when God calls us to the ancient paths, He is calling us to the paths that have been, that have been opened up, that have been established by the Word of God. You know, whenever we, we drive on roads, we know that some roads are stronger than others. Some roads um, last longer than others. And some roads, you're able to, 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 to make that road and to open up that road by using uh, man-made tools, um, hand tools, as you cut open a way through the forest or you, you open up a way in your garden with a, a shovel, a spade, or whatever it is. But then there are other roads that need to go through mountains. And then you need dynamite. Then you need explosive power because you need to blow a way open through that mountain. And that is the Word of God. The Word of God has established certain paths, certain ancient paths, certain relational paths that, that are ours to walk upon. The Road of God, <laughs> the Road of God, the Word of God has opened up and has established paths, good paths for us to walk upon. The Spirit of God leads us on those paths. The Spirit of God reminds us this is where that ancient path is. This is the path that the Word of God has opened up in your life. Go back to that road. Go and revisit that road. Go back and, and do business with God on that road again. Put your feet back onto that road. Don't forget about that road. Get back onto 
that road. This is the way. Turn left, turn right. Write the email. Don't write the email. Don't send the email. Make the call. Don't make the call. Enter the relationship. Don't enter the relationship. Uh, uh, engage with that business partner. Now stay away from that business partner. The Spirit of God wants to lead us and wants to direct us, but the Spirit of God can only do that if we are walking on the established paths of God's Word. The, the, the Word of God establishes the paths for us. The Spirit of God leads us on those paths, and the people of God journey with us on those paths. So what could be some of those ancient paths that God would be holding before us during this time? I believe that there are three. I chatted with our pastors around this a little bit, and I want to share this with, with you as well because I do believe that they are reflective of the journey that we have been on, that we have been journeying on these ancient paths over the last few years or so, but that God is also calling us to walk with continued deliberation and commitment upon these paths. The first one that God really began to emphasize to us was the path of rest. There's this beautiful invitation that, that God gives us in, in Scripture in Matthew 11, verse 28, where Jesus says, come. Again, it's that word come, and you, you need to travel on a path, don't you, to come to someone. Come. Come to me. All you who are heavy burdened, heavy laden, come to me and learn from me, and, and you will find rest for your souls, he says. Uh, come, come to me and, and receive a yoke that is soft and a burden that is light. Come and, come and receive this exchange that can take place. And whether it was 50 years ago or 2,000 years ago when Jesus spoke these words, or whether it is now, there is no other way for our souls to find rest than at the feet of Jesus. We need to come. And we need to continue to come. There will never be a place where we can have any substitutes in our lives except the presence of Jesus, not the presence of Jesus via someone else or via a worship experience only, but the presence of Jesus that is accessible to you and to me in equal measure based upon our willingness to come. And so when, when, when Jeremiah says, uh, I want you to ask and, uh, for the ancient path, and one of the paths that God says, I want to give you, it is the path of rest. He says, I, I want to give this path to you. It is my gift to you. It is your inheritance. Ask for this. I want to give it to you. But don't look for it in any other way, in any other place except in my presence. And so that means that we need to close the door of our closet a prayer closet. We need to take the word for ourselves. We, we need to walk with Jesus again as an individual and not um, through someone else. And we need to come and unburden consistently, faithfully, just unburden. Unburden, unburden, unburden. Be honest, be raw. Uh, during this time, more than ever before, we cannot afford to bottle things up, to keep things on the inside we need to make peace with our humanity. We need to make peace with the fact that we are not in control. We need to make peace with the fact that we are not limitless. And shake off burdens that God has never called us to carry. Embrace your limits. Embrace your humanity. And in that, receive the rest from God. Because that rest leads us to the, to the second path. And that is, if we are in a place of rest with Jesus, then then we can truly walk at peace with those around us. Then we can be in unity with those around us. Psalm 33 verse 1 is a beautiful psalm. Go and read the whole psalm. But it starts off and it says, Behold, in other words, look, see, take notice. <laughs> be amazed at how beautiful it is when brothers dwell together. Behold how good and how pleasant it is when family dwell together. When, when we talk about dwelling, we, we're talking about living, but we're talking about journeying as well. The, the, the word dwell has that concept of walking together. It's Amos 3 verse 3 says, how can two dwell together? How can they walk together unless they agree to meet together? 
And so what is our meeting place now, especially when many of us cannot meet together? What is our meeting place when we don't see eye to eye politically, we don't see eye to eye with what is wrong with the world or what is behind the pandemic or, or, or any of these things that sometimes can divide us here on earth? Where do we meet in order to travel on this ancient path of unity? It's, it's an ancient path because the unity of God is our standard, is our example, and He has been forever one, and He will be forever one. And so the ancient of days invite us into that place, into that place of walking the same path that Jesus and Father God and Holy Spirit are walking on, the ancient path of unity. And Hebrews reminds us of this fact that there is one Lord, one baptism, and one faith. And so we meet around the shed blood of Christ, that Jesus is our Lord. He binds us together. It's not show for us a vision statement. It's not the fact that we have uh, amazing bands or incredible worship material or any of those things. It's the fact that Jesus bled and died for us and that we love him and that he loves us, therefore we can be one. Therefore we can be in unity. But it is also important to understand that, that, that we are going somewhere, that we want to love each other in such a way that the world can know that we are his disciples. We want to serve each other and carry each other's burdens and wash each other's feet and support one another in the good times and in the bad times. It's the path of unity that enables us to have the blessing and the favor of God upon our lives. I firmly believe that the path of rest and the path of unity opens up the door for us to walk in the path of faith. But it's not an individualistic faith only. It's not a faith that just says, I'm in right standing with God, as crucial as that is and as indispensable as that is because my walk with God does not depend upon my parents' walk with God. I, I cannot blame the government or my parents or my grandparents for my walk with God. It is my walk with God. It is my faith in God. And yet at the same time, God has called us to walk together. I believe that, that when 1 John 5 verse 1 to 5 speaks about the fact that when we love those around us, those who have also been born of God, when we love those whom God loves, then, then we give testament to the fact that we have true faith inside of us and overcoming faith inside of us. Whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. And, and John says that, that my brother is born of God, I'm born of God, and therefore I will love my brother because we come from the same seed, we come from the same father, we have got the same blood inside of us. And now we begin to, to walk in a dimension where we, we have what, what John calls a victory that overcomes this world, even our faith. And you, so you see that faith is not, it's not separate from us being in Christ and being in Christ together. <laughs> that, faith, that faith, true faith, understands that I'm connected to my brother and to my sister. And I believe that in 2021, what we will have before us is a collective faith, a faith that is interdependent, that we will see victory and breakthroughs in, in ways that we will not see by ourselves, but simply by coming into agreement and into unity with each other around God's purposes. We will support one another and we will pray for one another and we will love each other. And we will have sacrificial faith and some of us will be weak at times and somebody else's faith will stoop down and will pick us up or will break through the roof to carry us into God's presence. We will not be content to be strong by ourselves while those around us are weak. We will carry each other. We will not be intimidated by one another's strengths and we will not be pushed away by one another's weaknesses. We will be a safe place where both the strong and the weak can be welcome and we understand that there are seasons when I'm strong and my brother is weak and there are seasons when I'm weak and my brother is strong and both of us, we need each other. And so, so far, church family, I want to encourage you to continue to travel with those around you in your local congregation, as well as those within the broader Shofar church family and those in other parts of the body of Christ, because ultimately, we are one irrespective of the name we carry. But as church families, we have an opportunity to give expression to that oneness 
not in some weird, theological, airy-fairy, theoretical way, but in a real way, a way that impacts my money and my time and my, my, uh, makes demands upon my selfishness and, and pushes me out of my comfort zone in a way that is real. Continue to journey together. The ancient path of rest in God's presence, the ancient path of unity around the shed blood of Jesus Christ, and the ancient path of overcoming faith that comes from understanding that we are born of the same God and have a faith inside of us that will overcome every test that this world throws our way. Let me pray for us. Father, thank you so much, Lord, for your incredible goodness. Thank you for the journey of rest, the journey of unity, and the journey of faith that you are holding before us. Thank you that as Shofar Church family, we could travel upon this road, and Father, you are now leading us deeper upon this road. I speak a blessing, God, upon my brothers and my sisters, and I thank you for the good way, Lord, wherein we can find rest and life for our souls. In Jesus' name, amen. We love you. We look forward to seeing you again. Thank you for your prayers and thank you for being salt and light and a shining example to this world. The Lord bless you. Bye-bye.